Good day, cute angels! Welcome to a new learning episode. I am Teacher Nancy, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Before we start today's lesson, kindly prepare your self-learning module, your pen, and paper to write your answers as we progress with our discussion. And most importantly, look for a place in your home where you feel safe and comfortable. Please be reminded that you may comment or ask questions at the comment section. For this week's lesson, we are going to prove statements on triangle congruence. From our previous lessons, we say that two triangles are congruent if the six corresponding parts are congruent. In general, two figures are said to be congruent if they have the same shape and size. Hence, Congruent figures can fit each other exactly. It is important to list the letters of the vertices in the correct order whenever you write a congruent statement. In here, we have the properties of triangle congruence. Analogous to the properties of equality of real numbers, properties of congruence of triangles are stated. The first property is congruence of triangles is reflexive. For every triangle ABC, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC, or it is simply congruent to itself. The second property is congruence of triangles is symmetric. If triangle ABC is congruent to triangle GEO, then triangle GEO is congruent to triangle ABC. And the third property is congruence of triangles is transitive. If triangle ABC is congruent to triangle GEO and triangle GEO is congruent to triangle XYZ, then triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. To prove two segments or two angles are congruent, we must show that they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Remember, we have the CPCTC or the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. For triangle congruence, you have the following. We have the SSS congruence, the SAS congruence, the ASA congruence, and the SAA congruence. Take note that there is no SSA congruence and there is also no AAA congruence. Let us have our first example. Given that side AB is parallel to side BC and side AD is parallel to side BC, prove that side AB is congruent to side DC. Now let us use the statements and reasons or the two-column proof to prove that side AB is congruent to side BC. We will use the two-column proof to prove that side AB is congruent to side DC. The statements in this case are all arranged in one column under the heading statements. Opposite the statements are their corresponding reasons, which are also arranged in one column under the heading reasons. The reason for each logical statement is based on established definitions, postulates, theorems, corollaries, and properties. For our first statement, let us begin with the given statements. Side AB is parallel to side BC. Side AD is parallel to side BC. The reason for this is, it is the given. For our second statement, since Side AB is parallel to side BC and side AD is parallel to side BC. We can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. The reason is, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. We can see that we have a quadrilateral. ABCD composed of two triangles, triangle ABD and triangle CDB. For our third statement, side BD is congruent to side BD. What will be the corresponding reason for this? 
you are right. The third reason is reflexive property. From statements 2 and 3, we can see that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDD by applying the ASA congruence postulate. For A, we have angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, for S, we have DD is congruent to side BD, and for A, we have angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. So, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB by as a congruence postulate. And since the two triangles are congruent, we can now prove that side AB is congruent to side DC by the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent or the CPCTC. Again, the final reason is CPCTC or the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Actually, this will always be our final reasoning in our two-column proof when proving statements on triangle congruence. Let us have the next illustration. We can see that we have a quadrilateral STLE composed of two triangles STL and SEL with a common side SL. The given are as follows. Side LS bisects angle TLE and angle LTS is congruent to angle LES. We prove that side TS is congruent to side ES. For our first statement, let us write the first given. Side LS bisects side TLE. The reason is, it is given. The next statement is angle TLS is congruent to angle ELS. What is its reason? The correct reason is the definition of angle bisector. The two angles have the same measure since they are the result of side SL bisecting angle TLE. For our third statement, angle LTS is congruent to angle LES. It is the second given in our example. So the reason is given. The two triangles STL and triangle SEL has one common side which is side SL. Therefore, side SL or side LS is congruent to side LS by, you are right, the reflexive property. For our fifth statement, since we have angle TLS is congruent to angle ELS, angle LTS is congruent to angle LES, and side LS is congruent to side LS, we can now say that triangle TSL is congruent to triangle ESL by the AAS congruence postulate. Now since the two triangles TSL and triangle ESL are congruent, therefore side TS is congruent to side ES. The reason is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent or the CPCTC. If you are still having a hard time trying to understand these examples, don't you worry because we still have two more examples. For this example, we have triangle ABX. Side AR is the perpendicular bisector of side BX. Take note that a perpendicular bisector is a line that bisects another line and creates two right angles. We will prove that the angles B and X are congruent using the two-column proof. To show the proof, we must first draw a table with two columns. We are going to write the statements on the first column and the reasons on the second column. We can start proving by stating the given. We can write the given side AR is the perpendicular bisector of side BX. Again, for our first statement, we have the given side AR is the perpendicular bisector of side BX. Directly across it, the reason we can write in column 2 is that the statement is a given. From the given, we can deduce that side BR is congruent to side RX. 
We can show this by marking side BR and side XR with two tick marks each. What reason could we use to justify these statements? That is right! The reason that we can write for this statement is the definition of perpendicular bisector. The line, aside from creating two right angles, also created two sides with similar or equal length. These sides are side BR and side XR. We can see from the illustration that the two triangles have a common side, which is side AR. For our third statement, we can write side AR is congruent to side AR. The property used for this statement is the reflexive property. In consideration of statements 1, 2, and 3, we can now safely state that triangle ARB is congruent to triangle ARX. This will be our fourth statement. We were able to derive the fourth statement through the LL congruence property. So let us write that as the reason. The LL congruence property was discussed by Sir Joshua on our previous episode in this channel. Again, the LL congruence property or the leg-leg congruence property states that if the two legs of one right triangle are congruent to the two legs of another right triangle, then the two right triangles are congruent. In this given figure, the two pairs of legs that are congruent are side BR and side XR. We also have side AR and side AR, their common side. Now that we have proven the congruence between the two triangles, we can state the congruency between the corresponding parts of the two triangles. Since we are trying to prove that angle B is congruent to angle X, we can state this as our last statement in the last row. What do you think is the reason we can write to justify this statement? That is right, since we have proven that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB through LL congruence postulate, we can infer that angle D is congruent to angle X through the CPCTC theorem. That is, the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let us now proceed with our next example. Let us try to analyze the given illustration. These are the given. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. O is the midpoint of SP. Again, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. O is the midpoint of SP. We are going to prove that side DO is congruent to side SO. Now let us prove that side DO is congruent to side SO using the illustration and the given. Again, let us draw a table with two columns. The first one is for the statements and the second one is for the reasons. For the first statement, we can write angle 1 plus angle DSO equals 180 degrees and angle 2 plus angle SPO equals 180 degrees. These are the so-called linear pairs. In the reason, we write linear pairs of angles are supplementary. A linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles whose non-adjacent sides form a line. The measure of a straight angle is 180 degrees. So a linear pair of angles must add up to 180 degrees. For statement 2, we can equate both equality statements from statement 1 as a single equation since both are equal to 180 degrees. This is the so-called substitution property. And we can write this as the reason in column 2. Again, for statement number 2, we have angle 1 plus angle DSO is equal to angle 2 plus angle SPO. The reason is by applying the substitution property. From that, we can now write the first given angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 as our statement 3. As usual, the reason for this is given. 
From statement 2, we can derive our next statement. We can state that angle DSO is congruent to angle SPO since they are supplements of angle 1 and angle 2. We know that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent from statement 3. Hence, this can also be said to their supplements angle DSO and angle SPO. The reason for this is that supplements of congruent angles are congruent. We can continue with statement 5 by writing the second given. O is the midpoint of SP. From here, we can establish statement 6 by writing that side SO is congruent to side PO. The midpoint O bisected side SP in the illustration and it is a given, creating these two congruent sides shown in the illustration. This is by the definition of the midpoint, which is the reason for the statement. Moving on to the next statement, we can see the vertical angle pairs DOS and angle SOP in the illustration. Thus, our next statement is angle DOS is congruent to angle SOP. Now, what postulate can we use to prove this statement? You're right! We can write the vertical angles definition or vertical angles are congruent as our statement for this. Now, through statements 4, 6, and 7, we can now establish the congruence of the two triangles. Hence, we can write triangle SDO is congruent to triangle PSO via the ASA congruence. Finally, we can now prove the requirement of the problem. Since side DO and side SO are corresponding parts of the two congruent triangles, therefore, they are congruent. We can state that side DO is congruent to side SO by CPCTC postulate. That ends our proof for the last example of our discussion. For your practice and application of the things that you have learned from our discussion, try to create the two-column proof for each of the two given problems. This will serve as your activity for this week's lesson. That's all for now. Again, this is Teacher Nancy, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Have a nice day, be safe, and God bless us all.